Honestly, I thought there'd be more unpredictability in it. I thought there'd be less goats. I'm gonna be real with you. I thought we would get rid of those farmyard animals for the last time, and instead they're sticking around. I don't think they'll ever die. It's unbelievable, immortal goats. If you watch every sport game, any games, you always choose a class. Like, for example, on League of Legends, you have one support, one DPS, one mid, one top, one jungler. It's always the same thing. But in Overwatch, you can get, for example, three supports. One day you're gonna get four tanks. I really don't like these things. You just right click, for example, Azaria just right click on the front and that's it. Like if you watch pro players right clicking on the front of the shield is not interesting. Now we're just grabbing bomb, shatter, grabbing bomb, shatter, trance, beat. That's so weird. The weird thing is that a lot of the the meta did shift between stage one and stage two. We have seen a bunch of bunker compositions. We saw a bunch of triple DPS being run on certain maps. We've seen older players expand their hero pools to places we didn't really think they could go. What's really fun is that teams this year are doing it in so many different ways. Like you have teams that'll just play, you know, a Reinhardt version of triple tank, triple support. You have the hunters who don't play anything like anybody else, right? On like two different opposite ends of the spectrum. Like you have teams that favor Sombra, you have teams that it's like, it's so varied. The issue with it is that you just can't run it on a, a lot of the maps that are in the pool. Like if you go to King's Raw or Rialto or something like that, you're just gonna play triple tank, triple support. And that's, uh, it's difficult to get away from that. I, I feel for the players a little bit, honestly, because they have to, uh, they, they have a fairly brutal schedule already to be able to keep up with what's going on. And then when things do drastically change, you might have uh, a situation where a hero that was the reason that you were so good in the first place is just suddenly out of the meta, or you've been practicing and grinding to be excellent at one style and suddenly it all disappears. Uh, there's a lot of pressure to, to perform in a way that isn't really there with even traditional sports because it's not like the, the pitch gets remodeled every few weeks. I suppose the counter argument is that it just it comes with the comes with the job, right? Like the entire point of being a top Overwatch player is being able to adapt and being smart enough to be able to perform in a range of different uh, heroes and styles. But for sure, I mean, the, there's some people in the league who are in a in a bad position through no fault of their own, just because that's the way that the the game shook out. It's it's a it's a meme at this point to talk about brig jail, but it's uh, yeah, it's. It's a, it's, a, it's a real thing, it's a real thing. Well, taking a break. Yeah. yeah, I think breaks are really important. You know, they let you kind of restart in a way, like go back, like not really think about the game too much and kind of get like refreshed back, like, I don't know, just kind of get back in the zone in a way. It's, I think it's good for that. Did you miss Ben Best? Did I miss Ben Best? Yeah. Did I miss you? Ah, uh, no, it's fine. It was fine. <laughs> it was really cool to go back home. Uh, really refreshing, I would say. It even feels weird because I don't see Paris the same way as I was seeing it before. Um, because I came in LA and I'm, I'm watching everything in LA like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tourist, you know, I'm a new guy, so I take care about everything. And I came back in Paris and tried to do the same, take care about everything. And I actually see Paris more beautiful than I was, uh, that as what I was thinking about Paris. So it was actually very interesting. I wanted to change my mind during this break. Uh, try to disconnect a bit from Overwatch and everything. So that's why I was like trying to have plans, not uh, stay at home. And yeah, so yeah, I was kind of busy. Um, I wanted to take time really to not think about Overwatch and disconnect totally, uh, but in a way to come back better and more focused. So yeah, why now I'm. Only thinking about Overwatch, about how big we have to be. Uh, I really want us to, to come back stronger and do a great stage. I was chilling with my girlfriend, like visit some place on, uh, on LA, like Santa Monica, the zoo, something like that. It, it was a short time, so no, I, I didn't want to, to go in France and come back, like it was so short. So my girlfriend uh, was coming. I see no difference here, like I'm staying focused all the time and the break is fine, yeah, for the mindset to reset a bit, but I don't mind and I, I keep the same mindset, the same mindset uh, all over the seasons. Don't really agree with everything we did in stage two uh, about our game style, uh, what we chose to play. But I think it was a good experience as well because it could, it could have worked actually. 
We played tanks for sure, but we play a better tanks because we missed on stage one and we wanted to, to do the same uh, another way on uh, stage two with uh, some DPS comp. I didn't play too much when I went back to England though, but like well, since I've been in LA, I've been playing quite a lot actually. I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to getting back in and scrimming. I really do miss it. I feel like super focused on what we have to do now this stage and really just like motivated to get in and do it. Kind of honestly got a bit bored of not scrimming. Like once you have like a schedule and you scrim so often, like you get used to it in a way. Then as soon as you're on break, you miss it. It's just like kind of what's like normal. Oh, first shot of the day. Good job, mate.